Hey guys, Blakey here and welcome back to another video. Today I've got another tutorial for you guys on Unity and that tutorial is 2D animation. So what I mean by that is having a player that has an idle, a run and a jump animation and when you move, when you're idling and when you're jumping, those animations play. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is have your animations imported but the way you need to import them is very specific okay for the way that we're going to be doing it. So we're going to be using a animation uh, type called tile sheets so the way that tile sheets work and via drag an image just over here. They work as a image of all of the animations that you have so each frame next to each other in the image and the dimensions of each image is very important okay so for example our idle animation has five idols where his legs just very slightly bend up up and down so he just goes down and then up down and then up and the image is 500 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall which means each image is 100 pixels by 100 pixels now you can use uh, Photoshop GIMP or even paint or anything that you've got for your animations make sure you put them in a sprite sheet like this once you've imported them into unity go ahead and go to the top of there make sure your pixels per unit is set to yours go to your sprite mode and go ahead and change that to multiple for me personally i like changing the filter mode to point no filter but that's because i'm working with pixel art go ahead and hit apply and then go back up to this sprite edit editor button up here and go ahead and click it right there and change the sl to automatic to grid by cell size and for mine, because each is 100 by 100, I'm going to go ahead and split it just like that. 100 by 100, press slice. And you can see they divide very evenly like that. And now I've got five separate images. Go ahead and hit apply. Close this. And then when I press this little arrow right here, and it opens them. It shows my five different images just like that. And that is exactly what you want for all of your animations. So I've got the same for my idle and my running animation, which is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit on this. Single, change that to multiple, change by linear to point no filter. Press apply, go to your sprite editor, same again, grid by cell size. For me, it's 100 by 100. We're going to go ahead and press slice. We're going to hit apply and we're going to tick that. And now you can see they're all individual images just like that. Finally, for my jump animation, to keep this very simple, it is purely just one tile just like that because I didn't want to confuse people with having multiple jump animations. So for now, we're just going to be using one frame. To keep this nice and simple so you guys can understand the basics of 2D animation. So without further ado guys, now we can jump in to start creating our animations. So before we do that, I am going to change the player sprite to our idle animation just so we know what it is. You can see it is currently very, very small, so I'm going to go ahead and change this. This was for a previous video, so that is why the block is like that. If I can go ahead and increase that just like that. And just like that, we've got our little player. And you can see if I go ahead and press play on this, there's absolutely no animation. He just moves left and right. It is very, very rigid. So what we're going to do guys is go ahead and select your player just like that. Go to the animation tab. If you don't have this tab, go up to window, go to animation and just hit the animation button right there and it will give you this tab and press create. We're going to type in idle anim just like that and you can see it's created an animation right there. If we go to our projects tab, you can see that we have created an idle animation and we've also created a controller. So an animation controller is where you change all of your states. So here's where we have transitions and stuff and we're going to be getting into this later in the video. Okay. So now that we've got this idle animation and you can see I've got my four idols right here, my five idols even, I'm going to grab these. I'm going to shift click all of them just like this and I'm going to drag them in just like that. And you can see they're all bunched up uh, very tight and we're going to change that now. So I've got a samples tab right here. Samples is just how fast you want the animation to play. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 12 as that's usually the standard. Now if I zoom in on this and I press play, you can see that he does idle very nicely. So obviously you'll have your own animations and you can tweak these in your uh, respective program. But this is how mine looks. It's not the best uh, animations, like wait till you see the running one. But yeah, <laughs> they work and they do the job for the video. Also, if you want to know what animations these are from, this is from my game uh, Silhouette Dash, which will be coming out next month, so stay tuned for that. One thing before we move on to the next animation, guys, if you don't have this samples tab, all you've got to do is go to the settings and just hit show sample rate. This is something that was causing me issues when I first done this method. But now that we have this animation set up, we are all good to go and create another one. So go ahead to the idle anim, go to create new clip, and we're going to type in run, just like that. And now that we've got another one, so I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to drag my project tab. We'll do it over here this time. We'll, we'll switch it up. We'll switch it up. If I go ahead and click all my running ones, so I'm going to shift click and drag all of them. And I'm going to drag them onto here. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to hit 
uh, change the samples from 60 to 12 and now if I hit play you can see that he does his little running animation like I said it's not the best running animation you can get for pixel art but it does the job finally the last animation that we need for the video is our jump so I'm gonna type in jump anim and like I said this is literally just one uh, frame so this is a pretty simple one to do we can just drag this on and if I press play you can see it's literally just one little jump animation it's very very simple now that we've got our three animations we can go ahead and go to our controller and start messing with that so to access your controller go to wherever you created your animations and there will be a controller right there which has these weird little icons it might be it might look newer in new versions of unity but i'm using 2019 as this the most generic one that people use go ahead and double click to open it up and you'll get this animator tab if for any reason that you don't have this tab go to window animation and just press the animator right here and you should have your entry state your any state an idle animation a run and a jump before that we start messing with these we're going to make two parameters so parameters are basically different variables that we can access through script for example the two that we're going to be making is is running and is jumping and this basically means when we are on the floor we can set the is jumping to false which means the is jumping animation isn't going to be playing or for example we can set the is running uh, boolean to true which means that running is that the running animation will be set to true then so go ahead and press this add button up here and just press boolean and we're going to type is running if you're following this tutorial exactly like mine make sure you type everything and use capitals exactly where I am okay go ahead and hit enter and we're going to create one more just for good measure is jumping just like that and we can leave these both set to false for now because we're going to be changing these through script anyway now that that's out of the way we can start messing with these so the first thing we're going to do we're going to go to our any state we are going to drag our jump animation over here and um, if you right click on your any state and press make transition we go ahead and connect it to our jump animation so this basically means in no matter what state we're in we can go to the jump animation so long as is jumping is set to true okay and now that they're set up we can go ahead and press on this little arrow in the middle this is our transition and we're going to be messing with some settings in here so the first thing we're going to be doing is if you see down here we've got this little conditions tab we're going to go ahead and hit plus here and we're going to go to is jumping and like I said whenever is jumping is true that means we can go to the jump animation. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and right click on your jump anim make a transition and drag it to our idle that means when we're from going from our jump animation we can then go to our idle and we're going to be doing the same for our run but we'll go to the idle first. So when we're going from jump to idle go ahead and click on your little conditions tab and make sure has exit time is firstly set to false we're going to go to our conditions and make sure is running is set to true open up your settings and make sure fixed duration is on and our transition duration is set to zero next what we're going to do is go to our jump animation right click make another transition and hit that sort of run animation go ahead and press on the little transition in the button this time we're going to keep exit time on and we're going to leave all of these the same except again transition duration is set to zero this basically means that when we are transitioning there's no extra time in the middle and there's no delay it will just instantly flip to that transition which is what we want especially for pixel art you're going to want that because you want it nice and clean and you also want nice responsive controls for the player and for conditions we want is running to be set to true so when we're going from jumping to running only set the running animation to true if we can run otherwise it would just look stupid finally go to your run animation hit make transition and do the idle and then we're going to go back and we're going to do the same make transition and set that back to running so we have two transitions so we can go from idle to running and vice versa firstly click on your one going from idle to run and we're going to turn off exit time we're going to turn off the transition duration so it's set to zero and finally if we go down to our conditions we're going to go ahead and set is running to true as you would guess and vice versa for the make transition going back we want is running to be set to false this time we want no transition duration and we want has exit time to be turned off that is everything that we've got to do for our animation controller it's nice and simple now if we go ahead and hit play you can see that our idle animation is playing but that is in fact the only animation that is playing we can't actually jump and we can't move left and right and change those respective animations just yet but for a start at least we have the idle animation working which does look pretty cool when he's standing still the next thing we're going to need to do is go to our player movement script so this is going to be relative to yours but i'm going to show you how mine works so if you need to change anything for yours then you can go ahead and do that so i'm going to open up our player movement script and you can see we've got our script here 
So the way mine works, we've just got a couple of variables for speed, jump, moving, as a private float. We've got obviously our rigid body being accessed and we also have a private boolean for is jumping. Now this is quite important, you're going to need to have this in yours. So this basically means one, uh, if the collision, if he's touching the ground, then is jumping is set to false. And so by having this set to false here, this means if we're pressing the jump button and is jumping is set to false, that means we can jump. So that means if he is jumping, and jumping is jumping is set to true then we can't jump so make sure you have that set similar to mine now that we've got that out of the way let's go ahead and add some scripts so the first one we're going to want to do is we're going to get a private ball and we're going to call it is actually we're just going to call it facing right go ahead and hit add a, uh, make sure you add a semicolon and finally we're going to do a private float and we're going to call this actually it's not going to be a float is it it's going to be animator Make sure it's animator, not animation. And we're just going to call it anim for now. Make sure you add name. That works too. Anim. There we go. If I can spell that work. But there we go. That's all the uh, variables we need. Now, before we get into our update function, we're going to go to our start function. And we're going to set anim equal to get component. And we're going to grab our animator. So the animator is the is a component that is added to your player once we create any any animations based off of the player. Okay, it will be added automatically, so you don't need to worry about adding that manually. Secondly, the thing we're going to do in the start function is we're going to set facing right equal to true. So we're going to have it when the game starts, facing right is automatically set to true. That's everything we've got to do for the start function. We're going to move down to the update function now. So the first thing we're going to do, you can see that when we do press jump and is jumping is set to true. What we're going to do, we're going to go down directly underneath that, and we're going to do an if statement. If is jumping is equal to true, so make sure it's two equal signs, and do a curly bracket like that. So if it's set to true, we're going to do anim, which is referencing our variable that we made at the top, anim.set boolean. So that's the boolean that we made earlier, and the boolean that we made is is jumping. You can see just like that, and then we're going to set that to true. And you can see, so if jumping is set to true, we're going to set our animation jumping to true, which means when we're jumping, we will play the jumping animation. But we need to add something else because otherwise it will just permanently play this jumping animation. We need to set it to else anim.set ball. We're going to go is jumping, and now we're going to set it to false. So without this, once we first played that jumping animation, it would permanently stick to that jumping animation. Using the else function, this basically means if we're, if it's not set to true, so if anything else, the jumping animation will be set to false. That's everything we need to do for the jump function. Now we're going to go down to the bottom. This is going to be outside of our update function, so make sure you go outside of it. And we're going to make a private, and we'll call this flip. And the argument we'll use is float move. So what we're going to be using this for is when this is going to be referencing the face and right so when our player is moving left the animation will flip because otherwise it would just be constantly facing right and if we was going left it, he would basically be running backwards so this is why we're going to be using this function so firstly we're going to do an if statement if our move is bigger than zero so basically if he is moving in any way and he isn't facing right so if he's moving and basically going left or move is less than zero and facing right is true we're gonna make facing right equal to not facing right so this is kind of uh, a little bit confusing to understand so it's basically if he is moving and he's not facing right or if movement is less than zero so if he's standing still and he is facing right we're gonna set these to opposite each other it's kind of hard to understand but once you see that the script is fully working you'll understand why we do this because without this little function this wouldn't work but just by doing this, we still won't have our player flip. We actually need to grab the transform of our player so we can minus one, which will flip it. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to make a vector three. We'll call it the scale of the player. And we're going to set that equal to the transform dot local scale of our player. Then we're going to grab that scale, uh, that scale variable that we just made. And we're going to set its x axes and we're going to do multiply equals minus one. This basically means we're going to times this, we're going to times the scale of the player by minus one, and that's what it's going to be set to. And finally, we're going to set this transform.local scale to the new scale of the player. 
Again, this is kind of a hard concept to understand if you're first typing it in, but just trust me and type what I'm typing and I can assure you it will work. Now that we've made off uh, our function, we're going to go ahead and into our update function. I'm going to type in flip move, just like that. So that means in the update function, every tick it will check if we're facing right and it will do what needs to be done accordingly. But we're not done just there, we need to add another if statement and this is if move is equal to zero. We're going to set our anim.setBall and we're going to grab our is running and we're going to set that to false. Otherwise, anim.setBall is running is going to be set to true. And that's all we need to do for this little, func this little function. So this basically means if movement is zero, which basically means if he's standing still, we need to set the running animation to false. The jumping animation will also be set to false, and that means the only animation left to play will be the idle. So that means when he's standing still, his idle animation will be playing. Before we move on, guys, uh, one thing that I did forget to do is you need to go to your back to your animator, go from your jump animation to your idle. The transition in between, we need to set is running equal to false this needs to be set to false so when he is going from jump to idle the jump animation no longer plays this is one uh, thing that I just completely forgot to do so make sure you do that before we move on now that all of the script is set in place and we fixed that little error just before I'm gonna go ahead and close our script we can go to our scene view and now if we go ahead and hit play you can see we first are, are in the idle animation we move left and he's running left we move right and he's running right we hit jump and you can see the jump animation plays. You can see that there is a slight, slight delay in the animation and the way we can fix this is if we can go ahead, we can set the transition duration from here, we can set it to 0.1, just like that. If we go ahead and hit press play now, you can see he jumps, he goes back down. There's a very, very slight delay, but that's because it's 0.1. You can set it to zero if you want. This is just my personal preference. But now guys, you can see that all three animations are working perfectly. They work very nicely and they work smoothly with each other. Hopefully they work with yours as well. If you, have any, if you have any questions about this tutorial, feel free to leave them in the comments. I can help you out if you add me on your Discord or you join our Discord server. The link will be in the description of the video. If you have any other tutorial requests that you want, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I've got a big list that I've got and I add to it every time I get a request. But apart from that, guys, I'll thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.